I don't have to tell this audience here today about how important the healthcare sector is to Georgia's economy. Healthcare accounts for about 15% of our gross state product, and it consumes about 17% of the state's budget. I think we would all agree also that uh, we're living in a remarkable time in healthcare, especially as we begin to implement the core of the Affordable Care Act. So from a state perspective, DCH uh, is at the epicenter of a rapidly changing environment in healthcare. Uh, as many of you know, DCH is a lead agency for the planning, purchasing, and oversight of healthcare in the state of Georgia. It's the largest healthcare agency with a budget that totals nearly $13 billion when you include federal funds in it. By far the two largest programs that we have in the Department of Community Health are the State Health Benefit Program and the Medicaid Program. Between those two programs, we cover one in four Georgians. What has struck me during my time at DCH is how differently we've had to manage these two programs, the State Health Benefit Plan and the Medicaid Program, in the same rapidly changing environment. This morning, I'd like to take just a few minutes to compare these two programs. It really is a tale of two fundamentally different approaches to addressing the challenges that we all face in healthcare today. What I found in my work at DCH was that the State Health Benefit Plan, which is similar to a private sector plan, is able to adapt to change as the marketplace evolves. While Medicaid, on the other side, is a government-run health plan that remains rigid and flexible and very difficult to manage. Now, I know these two plans are different in many respects, and we just have to look at uh, the nature of those people, that the population that they're designed to serve, and would acknowledge that. But I still think there are some lessons that we can learn from the private sector in how to manage the Medicaid program. So let me take a few minutes to comment on that thought this morning. The State Health Benefit Plan is an employee-sponsored health plan. It's self-funded and self-insured. It provides health coverage to about 650,000 Georgians, largely teachers, state employees, retirees, and their dependents. And it operates, as I've said, principally like a private insurance plan. We establish benefits, we set premiums, we set deductibles and co-pays. We offer a range of coverage options. And through our wellness plan, we also incentivize certain healthy behaviors. State Health Benefit Plan, like other private sector plans, is subject to the mandates, the penalties, and frankly, the uncertainty related to the Affordable Care Act. Medicaid, on the other hand, is more like a government-run health plan. It's a shared state-federal program that was created back in 1965, and was originally created to be a safety net for low-income Americans, primarily dependent children, the blind, and the disabled. Medicaid has grown over time, and, and uh, many of you have heard me talk about how Medicaid has grown since then. But most people are surprised to learn that today, nationally, Medicaid covers more people than any other government health plan, including Medicare. We cover 1.7 million uh, people in Georgia here today with our Medicaid program. Also surprising the most, <coughs> excuse me, is how little flexibility states have in managing the Medicaid program. Since I've been commissioner, I have applied for an amendment to our state plan or a waiver from the state plan or the federal law on average once a month since I've been commissioner. We certainly can't respond to the changing environment as rapidly and medicated as we can in the state health benefit plan. I think a good contrast between these two plans uh, is seen in our budget experience. When I came to DCH just a few years ago, we had a two-year budget deficit of $815 million. We were able to make plan design changes pretty rapidly, and we put the plan back on a sound financial footing. This year, in a couple of weeks, we're hoping to end the fiscal year with about $100 million in surplus in the state health benefit plan through making those changes. We've also made some fundamental changes in the state health benefit plan, structural fundamental changes that relate to out-year liabilities known as OPEP, other post-employment benefits. And we reduced uh, change for future retirees, uh, their health care benefits going forward. Over a 30-year period, we've saved $11 billion. We reduced our out-year liabilities 
from $62 billion to $51 billion over that period. On the other hand, George's Medicaid budget has continued to grow. The Medicaid budget grew from by $482 million, or 34%, in the decade from 2000 to 2010. And in the grew from $1.4 billion in that time to about $1.8 billion. This year, in Medicaid and Peach Care, we'll spend about $31 million each working day on that program, and we process about 200,000 claims per day. To help cover Medicaid budget this year, Governor recommended an additional $211 million for the remainder of the fiscal year. That was in the amended budget, and another $217 million in growth for 2014. In addition, he added an additional $16 million in the Peach Care Program. All those funds and that growth is money that the state cannot use to spend on other priorities such as education, tax relief, public safety, or economic development. So we're always looking for ways in Medicaid and the state health benefit plan to save money and to improve care. So with the state health benefit plan, for example, we created one of the largest wellness, if not the largest wellness program in the country. Through our wellness plan, we've been able to incentivize and encourage healthy choices. And as our members deal with chronic conditions and hope we get healthier, the cost of the plan should go down in the future. On the other hand, Medicaid is not so flexible. Plan design changes, wellness incentives, and other measures to control cost and improve care are very hard to implement in the Medicaid program. Let me give you a couple of examples. We had a Medicaid patient uh, last year who presented to the emergency room in excess of 150 <coughs> times in that one year period. These visits all were for non-emerging conditions diagnosis of head and neck pain, migraines, and hypertension. All were paid by us to the hospitals at a triage rate, which is a non-emergency rate. Unfortunately, the individual consumers and incentives that uh, we have in the state health benefit plan would have impacted that behavior, such as meaningful and enforceable co-payments co that are commonly in place in the private sector, but significantly limited on the Medicaid program under current federal law. When we do want to make a change and improve care in the Medicaid program, we sometimes get conflicting guidance from the federal government. Recently, we want to move our uh, foster children uh, in the Medicaid program to one single care management organization so that this vulnerable population could receive more consistent and coordinated care. In fact, this was one of the few things that really came out where there was broad consensus from our Medicaid redesign project. The foster care children move around so much that they would really benefit from uh, being in one care managed organization. So we contacted CMS, and CMS told us that this program would be allowed. And then CMS told us that creating this program would not be allowed. And then recently they told us, well, it may be allowed, but another part of the government is going to have to approve it before we consider it. So that's where we are with regard to that program today. And then sometimes we want to do things that make very little sense. Or I should say we're required to do things that make very little sense. The federal government is now asking Georgia to develop and publish payment rates for services that Georgia currently does not cover, and Georgia has no intention. And then sometimes we're required to ask permission to do what the federal statutes require us to do. Under the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid must increase reimbursements to certain primary care providers for certain services effective January 1, 2013. So in order to implement this statutory requirement, we were told that we were required to apply to CMS to receive permission make this change to do what was mandated under the Affordable Care Act. Moreover, the federal rules would not allow states to request this permission until after the statutory effective date. So clearly, uh, those are just a few examples of some of the things that we deal with in the Medicaid program. And we really do need more flexibility in the program if we're going to address uh, both quality and cost 
Now, all of these facts help explain why several states, many governors, including Governor Deal, have said no to expanding Medicaid. Because we have so little flexibility, we project that the Georgia Medicaid budget will more than double in a decade, growing to $3.9 billion by 2020, and that's without the expansion. And since nationally Medicaid is growing at twice the rate of GDP, it's no surprise that the Georgia Medicaid program is consuming a greater percentage of state budgets, from 10% in 2000 to 16% the numbers get even worse under expansion. If Georgia expanded, Georgia's Medicaid enrollment would grow by about 620,000 enrollees by 2020 and cost the state an additional $4.5 billion in state funds. As the governor has said, even if the federal government is buying us lunch, we can't afford the tip. It's kind of funny, the uh, governor of Texas put it a little bit more bluntly when he announced that Texas would not be expanding Medicaid, uh, he said that he didn't want to add any more passengers to the Titanic. Um, I wouldn't say that we're on the Titanic, but even if we are on the Titanic, it doesn't mean we can't look for light. That's why we've got to continue to press Washington for more flexibility uh, and reform in the Medicaid program. Ideas like block grants are good ideas that ought to be explored. We need flexibility in the Medicaid program so that we can have a full opportunity to build Georgia's Medicaid program that's less bureaucratic uh, and more nimble and responsive to both patients and providers. We also have to provide value on the loop to taxpayers and to manage a program that's consistent with Georgia values and consistent with our pocketbook. Unfortunately, instead of making Medicaid more like a private sector plan, the Affordable Care Act is trying to make the private sector plans more like Medicaid. The result, of course, is an increased cost for consumers. The Affordable Care Act mandates that certain private sector plans, like the State Health Benefit Plan, uh, have to provide certain coverages, uh, mandated uh, benefits. And so as a result of those, uh, in the State Health Benefit Plan, for example, we've seen in the last three years an increase of 14% in premiums uh, in order to implement those mandates. And of course, 2014 is coming up, so we're really at the early stages of that. I also think we're going to see a lot of unintended consequences as the Affordable Care Act begins to roll out. One of my recent favorite examples is the premium tax. Uh, Georgia has a premium tax, but the Affordable Care Act implements a federal premium tax, which was designed to be imposed on private health plans uh, and the uh, state health benefit plan will pay that. And, uh, but it's got some unintended consequences that impact Medicaid. So it works something like this. The Affordable Care Act established this new federal premium tax. And private sector health plans are required to pay tax on premium it collects. So Georgia contracts with some private health plans, the care management organizations, to manage a good deal of our Medicaid population. So when this tax goes into effect, it increases the administrative burdens and costs of our CMOs. We are required to come in on an annual basis to take a look at actual costs and uh, establish their premiums based on actuarially sound rates. So as the CMOs pay premiums, uh, federal tax, uh, premium, premium tax to the federal government, their cost will go up and our cost, our per month uh, premium to the care management organizations is going to go up as well. But it gets worse than that. What happens is that, as you know, the Medicaid program, the federal government funds about two-thirds of our Medicaid program. So not only are we paying more every year through this premium tax, but two-thirds of the more that we're paying comes from the federal government. So what you have in the end is the federal government taxing itself. Uh, I'm hoping that's not an intended consequence of the Affordable Care Act. I can't imagine that it is, but I think there are going to be a number of these kind of examples going forward. Um, I think we probably all have examples. Uh, many manage businesses, both large and small, and uh, there are a number of stories and examples that you all have. But the bottom line is that we are in a period of unprecedented change here in healthcare, 
and we're all going to have to work together to navigate this unfamiliar landscape. So I know with the Chamber's help, Georgia will manage these challenges uh, and continue to be a great place to do business. With that, let me just thank you for all that you've done. I wish you all the best, and I'm happy to answer any questions.